hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show part four of our scale model build well we ended last week with cutting and shaping that engine block and while it wasn't anything that was extremely difficult if you don't think of the process of doing it you can mess yourself up a little bit and that holds true as well for the fenders, which is the next step that we're going to take on this build. And it's not difficult, but it's one of those things that you really need to think through your process. And for that reason, I'm going to run through it with you here on today's show. So in the interest of speeding this build along just a little bit, for simple pieces and simple parts, I will only be giving a brief synopsis of what it is that you should be doing to make the parts. But for the parts that require a little extra thought process, those are the ones I will be concentrating on from here on in on the build. And the fenders are part of that process. So here we are giving you all the steps and the pieces. They show you a top profile, a front profile. And then they give you steps as to what it is that they want you to do and what the piece should look like when you're done. Now, I don't necessarily agree with their steps. I actually kind of disagree a bit. But for me, the first process here is to make templates of these profiles. Not so much for this step here, step two, because it's only one chamfer, but for this main shape here and this shape here and of course this chamfer right here that's along the side shaping, I will be making templates for these two. Um, that's not a big deal. We're going to photocopy these patterns, attach them onto some MDF and then cut them out on the scroll saw carefully and sand up to the line. And with that we have our templates cut and we could just verify their sizes, etc., here on the print. And you might notice that this one here is actually cut to the dotted line. And the reason for that is this top profile here on the fender is actually going to be the top profile up here of this step one. So that line will already be there. And all we need is this lower line so that we have a reference point of where we need to sand that curve to. Seems a little confusing right now, but don't worry about it. It'll all come together. Also, a little tip for you. While you're cutting these templates, don't use your scroll saw to cut these square ends. Use your square stock. This was a corner of my stock. So I utilize that to get a square edge here and then I use the table saw and my miter fence and cut a 90 degree cut right here to the exact length that I need it and did the same thing on this piece. So don't forget it's a template. So every single thing that you do on the template transfers to your finished piece. So now that we have the two templates made that we need, what we want to do is we want to cut our rough stock. And we're going to end up cutting some pieces of poplar for these fenders. And by the print, we can see that they're an inch and a half wide, or sorry, inch and a quarter wide by an inch and a quarter high. And it looks to me like if you look at the whole length of the fender, they are two and seven eighths of an inch long. So we're going to cut that stock over at the table saw and then we're going to come back and start with step one and marking things out. Well, you can pretty much take everything I said in that last little segment as far as cutting our pieces and scrap it. I did say at some point in time through this build that part of the fun of these projects is the problem solving that comes along with the entire build. And that's what I've come across now. I had said that I was going to cut my stock to meet the inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter by two and seven eighths inch requirements that I need for these fenders. But then when I thought about the process of cutting that block and realizing here that I have to cut this seven degree angle here so that our fenders will meet and mesh properly with our engine block, I realized I was putting myself in a dangerous position of trying to cut this angle on the table saw with this small little inch and a quarter wide piece. Didn't feel good with it. And I said before, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. So I started off 
with an inch and a quarter thick block that's much larger. I cut it to the proper length, which is two and seven eighths of an inch. And then from there on either end, I ended up cutting my angles of seven degrees. And from there, I then set it up so that I could place those pieces uh, onto my miter fence, set my stop gauge to lop off each piece at an inch and a quarter at its widest point. And you can see here that what we end up with is our engine block and then our fenders with a nice seven degree cut that meshes nicely with the engine block and makes everything fit properly. And there you go. And that is the whole point of working through the process in your head before cutting. So there you go. That would be the process to cut the main blocks. Now from here, we're actually going to jump ahead to what they call step four. And that would be drilling this little hole here. They call step four this angle and this hole. I've already done the angle. Sorry, I wasn't showing you the hole. This little hole right here. This hole is to hold the marker lights on the fenders. But I will drill that hole now while I still have square stock to work with. Because as I've said before, um, it's just easier to work from the square stock. So take the measurements off your plans, mark it, and drill your 3 32nd inch diameter hole. Well, your holes are done, and now it's time to start marking with your templates. And what I like to do is keep this whole unit together so that I don't lose track of the orientation of the fenders. So taking our step one template, look at which way it's facing. You're not always going to see this step one facing out. It will shift depending on what fender you're doing. And I just want to line it up with the fender on the outside edge. And once we get that outside edge done, we're going to just trace it out and mark. But now we've got a little bit of a problem. And what that problem is, is that because of the angle that we've cut, it now sits crooked. So we're not going to get a flat square line. So how do you compensate that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So in order to compensate that seven degree angle and be able to sand this thing square to the front face, all I've done is when I cut the other pieces with that seven degree, I cut a scrap of it. And what this is, is basically an exact replica of our fender, just a little scrap piece that I don't care about. And all you want to do is take your scrap piece and with a little bit of hot glue or even some double face tape, attach it temporarily to your scrap piece. And now this is held 90 degrees to the sanding table and you're able to sand this top profile with no issues. So then once it's all sanded and, and, and done and shaped the way you like it, just break it free of your block and then you can take your other piece and of course glue it on there giving you the 90 degree surface to sand and then sand the other profile. It's, uh, it's not any kind of voodoo and not any kind of magic. It's just uh, a little bit of quick thinking to try to compensate um, for the angles that you have to deal with in a project like this. So sand those profiles and then we're going to move on to take care of that kind of a bit of a tricky profile and, uh, and that front chamfer on the, the fenders. And just like that, we have both of our profiles. I put them both on the same time just uh, to give me a little more clearance from the edge of our sander and to give me more room to work with my fingers. Again, what, if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. So there are our main profiles. I'm gonna break these away now from our scrap block with the seven degree angle. And now we're gonna work on that chamfer on the front. And it is nothing more than just marking it. And we can just hand sand that if we like, or at the sander, Wh whatever, you know, floats your boat, go ahead and do it for that chamfer. It's nothing special. 
And there you can see that front chamfer sand it right there. And truth be told, um, because it was on the angle and I needed this square to the front face, I actually left it on that scrap block while I sanded that chamfer. And now I've got it separated and I've used that next template, which of course the plans end up calling uh, step three. And I have marked on our fenders the line that I want to sand up to. And that gradually meets up to the top edge of the fender. So this is all just sanding by eye. There is no technical way to do this. I'm going to take it over to that same belt sander and just gently nibble away at it, watching my line here on the end, watching my line here, and making sure that I don't cut into this chamfer. And that way I get a nice grade going up to the top and a nice curve to finish the shaping on both of these uh, fenders, both driver's side and passenger. Well, now that you have that top profile sanded, you can see it right there. Um, I have softened it just a little with some 220 sandpaper. I wanted enough that I would get still the definition here, but not a crisp line definition. So just slightly rounded it. And now what you want to do is mark for your wheel well. And that is also part of that template that you made for that step. So line up your template with your block of wood, of course, and mark for your wheel well. And all it takes for that, once again, is to take your scrap seven degree angle piece that you had and over to the scroll saw and using the double sided tape, attach it and cut your wheel well. And then you would end up with something like this. Now this looks like a very complicated piece. It has many different angles on many different cuts, but you could see that it wasn't really that difficult. And we managed to get our front fenders made here with next to uh, little, no to little difficulty with just a little bit of a thought process. So <clears throat> cut your fender wheel wells here and then we're going to need to make some more parts for these fenders. And uh, let's check the plans and see what they're calling for. Well, while this next piece looks a little complicated and is very confusing to some, it's actually not that bad when you try to wrap your head around it. And what we're going to do here is the same process that we did for cutting these fenders, where I'm going to get a wider piece or a longer piece so I can cut these seven degree angles. Then once we get that done, we're going to cut them to their proper width, turn them on their side and cut this angle here. And then it's just a matter of doing this chamfer. Now you'll see that there is an angle here which coincides with our wheel well. I will actually do that once it's glued to our fender piece. Um, this is kind of the front section of the fender. So I don't think there's anything that's uh, extra special here that we need a video on. It's just a matter of paying attention to angles and paying attention to um, exactly what process you're doing first to make sure that you're not changing the angles by losing your 90 degree reference when using fences and the uh, the work tables of the table saw and a sander. And there we have the bottom of the front fender made. Now, uh, the process I used to sand that chamfer once again was cutting a block and uh, just a scrap piece that mimicked the angle of this front piece so that I could get it on a 90 degree plane to the table of the sander and then I sanded that profile. Now you will note, this is just dry fit here, but you'll note that I did not sand this profile right here, which would be the continuation of the wheel well. And there's actually a reason for that. There is still one more piece of trim to go on this fender, and that would be the uh, fender trim. So we're gonna make the fender trim, glue it onto here, but we're gonna cut outside of the line at the bottom half. And once this whole fender is put together, we're gonna take this over to the sander, and we're gonna sand up to that line. That way all of our inside edges actually mate up. And for here, this line here on the fender piece is actually 
very slightly bigger than what we need. So by doing that and gluing it together and then sanding this bottom profile as the last step, you ensure that everything is uniform and it just gives it that extra look of professionalism that you're looking for when making a model this size or, you know, anything for that matter. It, anytime that you can make the edges, edges made up by cutting them or trimming them at the same time or sanding them to their final length, it's always a bonus and always a benefit. So it's nothing more than transferring the pattern onto a piece of wood, cutting it to the thickness specified in the pattern. So when I come back, we'll have that piece. We'll glue this in place here. This should all be glued together and we'll sand that bottom profile up just to clean up the inside edge of that wheel well. Well, we have our fender trim cut and it's only sanded on the outside radius. We've left this rough cut, <clears throat> cut just outside the lines. And now we need to glue this fender assembly together. We're not gonna glue it to the engine block because there's still work to do on it. But I'm just showing you here an easy method that I've come up with uh, in order to align everything up. And all I've got is a straight edge on this side and a straight edge on this side. It's clamped together here on the bench, it can't move, and I've just made sure that I've aligned my pieces and I've glued them together, making sure that this back edge of this fender is tight against this flat edge or this straight edge, and the tip of this fender piece is tied up against this straight edge. And it's just a great way to align it to make sure that everything is in its place. So. You don't have to have fancy straight edges like I've got. A simple piece of wood will do. Just something to help you align it to the edge. So glue up both of these fender assemblies so that they're kind of in this configuration. And once we get that done, we're going to glue on these fender trims. And once we get those glued on, then we're gonna do the final sanding on those pieces. Well, the fender trim is glued on, and if you remember, there's our scrap that we used from before to level this out so that we can take it over to the sander and sand this up to the line, and that'll bring everything flush and make it look just perfect. So I'm gonna take it over and sand it, and we'll see you when that's done. Well, the fenders are all glued up and they're all sanded up. The interior profile of the wheel well is really nice, and don't go crazy now and try to glue these onto the body because you still need to add more parts. And one of the main parts here would be this little section right here, which is the engine mount, they call it. The only thing you want to be aware of this is that there is a seven degree angle on it and you're going to want to cut it from larger stock just to keep your hands safely away from the blade. Well, now that we have the fenders done and we have those um, engine mounts glued on to the engine block, we can pretty much glue our fenders in place. Now, I'm a little bit confused here, um, only because I'm seeing in one of the drawings here, they're calling this a frame alignment block, and they're showing it right here. And to be quite honest, there isn't another drawing or another place anywhere around that I can find that uh, particular piece. I'm going to take the, the prints inside with me tonight and kind of go through them again and see if I can't find it. Maybe I'm just overlooking it. If not, I'll get back to you on it, exactly what I find there. But I'm pretty sure now that we have those engine mounts in place, we can mount our fenders to our um, engine block, as I said. And if you look over onto this page right here, which would be page six, they give a drawing here or kind of a sketch as to how the fenders go on. And you can see that this front fender section aligns with the bottom edge of our engine block. And of course our grill comes below that. So the way that I'm gonna work it is once I uh, double check for all of the pieces and I can't find this spacer, uh, I'm going to make sure that everything's sanded flush and then I'm going to glue my fenders in place. Don't make the mistake that I did and not put those engine mount blocks in place. Um, I actually ended up 
not cutting these at first and then I glued my fenders in place by accident and the next thing I know I was uh, knocking my fenders off of my engine block with a rubber mallet because I realized on a dry fit that they weren't in the right place. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I will continue to search for this mysterious frame alignment block that they're talking about and we will glue the fenders in place and then from there we're going to start working on the grill and the top trim for the hood. All right, so last night in search of the elusive frame alignment block, I took the plans inside and I went through them and I did actually end up finding it. And it was way back on page eight of nine. So much for chronological order. <clears throat> but either way, we're gonna cut those pieces and they're just a couple of simple squares, nothing fancy. Rip them up on the table saw and we're gonna glue this the fenders now to the body and get that solidified and then from there we're not going to glue that to the frame because as I said in the last clip we're going to start working on the front grill. Well the grill is really nothing special it is just a bunch of different pieces that are all glued together to make one solid front block and you can see a summary drawing of it here and all it consists of is the top, the bottom, two sides and then this center piece here that you can see it mounted right here. There's two things I don't like that they've done here and I will be changing that and that is these grill verticals. They're basically 1 16th inch pieces that are 3 16th inch deep and you're supposed to evenly space those all the way across this grill. And I'm going to tell you from experience, even with the most accurate setup blocks in the world, that is an extremely difficult task and um, it, it rarely works. It usually comes out looking just horrible. So I'm going to be trying something different for these grill centers or the grill verticals. As well, I don't agree with this particular piece here, which they're calling the hood ornament. This is a really tiny piece and they've got this inside routed edge. You can see it here and that is supposed to fit over and mate with the grill top. And you can see the profile of that there. You know what? That's a load of hogwash. I'm not losing my fingers cutting this piece. So what I will be doing is I will be cutting the grill top longer than normal, measuring the angles of this piece, cutting it, and then gluing in an insert so that it all becomes one straight piece across. And I'm not dealing with pieces fitting like this. You won't be able to tell the difference when you look at it. It will all look like it's one piece like it's supposed to. But I mean, that's just that's just crazy what they're what they're asking you to do there. So I will be changing that. So cut all the pieces for your grill, glue them together in a frame style here. You don't even really have to glue it for now. Let's let's not and wait till we get our center done. And once I get all of the outside pieces cut and put together, I'll come back to you and I'll show you what I have in mind for the center of the grill. I've cut the pieces for the front grill and they're just dry fit here together except for these top pieces that are actually glued together. And as you can see, I mean, you can't even tell that it's separate pieces. It looks the way that they planned for it on the plans. And uh, it was a much safer process not having to deal with shaping that little tiny piece, etc, etc. And a much cleaner fit as well. So now that it's dry fit like this, I just want to point out that before you cut these things to length, you want to put your roundovers where it's calling for. Obviously, we couldn't put it at the end grain here, but once this is all glued together, then we'll add that final roundover. And then we, of course, will contour the corners here to the radius that we've routed in the top of the engine block. Uh, I may have uh, mentioned that earlier about routing that radius, but if you haven't, now is a good time to do it. So instead of all these little slats and that center slat, what I've done is I've cut a piece of 3 16 inch poplar that will fit here in the middle. And now that we have that there like that, you can see how that all goes together. It doesn't look like much of a grill. And for this now, we're gonna take this center core piece over to the router table. So over here at the router table, I've got my center core of the 
um, front grill here, and this would be the vertical of it. I have a straight edge mounted to my fence of my router table, and that's just so I can make multiple passes without having the piece of wood fall into this gap here. And installed in the router, I have a 1 16th of an inch straight bit. Now, this is a very delicate bit, so I've only got it set to a depth of 1 16th of an inch. And what we're going to do is line it up as best we can with the center of this um, board. And we are going to run it through just like that. And then we're going to turn it 180 degrees and run it through again. And that will give us a groove in the middle. Once you get that first pass done, you now have your center groove. And what we're going to do is we're going to place it back over top of our router bit so that the router bit sits securely inside the groove. Loosen off one of your supports or one of your set pins of your router fence and move it back. And I've got a 1 8th of an inch setup block here. We're just going to put that in place against the straight edge here and just with gentle pressure just bring that fence up until it meets with both our uh, block and our original stock and once you get that set lock down your fence and take away your setup block and now you'll be ready for the next pass so make that next pass turn it around 180 degrees and pass it through again and that will give the uniform grooves on either side of this centerpiece. And now that you have that done, you want to repeat the process. Loosen off your fence, move it back, set it so that your bit is in that last groove that you routed. Place your setup block in behind your stock. Bring your fence gently up. You don't want to bring it too far because you don't want to break that bit. As I said, it is a fragile bit. So just like that, tighten down your fence and once again, make two passes. One, rotate it 180 degrees and make that pass again. So basically, you just keep repeating that process, moving your fence one eighth of an inch each time. Be careful with your fingers here, guys. Make sure you know where they are at all times, keeping in mind where that bit is going to exit and never run your fingers over top of the bit while holding the wood because you never know when that bit will worm its way loose and come up through the stock. But if you do it properly, you'll end up with something that looks like this. And if you add that to your grill pieces that you've already made, you end up with what I think anyway is a pretty spectacular looking grill. And uh, I think it comes out with a much better look than the process that they are giving you with the individual pieces. So guys, it's up to you what you want to do with this. If you want to try my method, by all means do. If not, you can always do it the way that they list on the plans. Remember, this is your build. Do as you see fit. Well, in order to finish this grill off, I'm using the straight edge here just to give me the proper alignment. We will glue all these pieces together and then I will continue my 1 8 inch round over over to this end grain here that I spoke of earlier on both the left and the right sides. And then we need to mount it to the front of our engine block. And once we get that done, we just need to mimic that round over that we have on the front end of the truck that can just be done by hand. And then at that point in time, basically your grill is done. There's one more piece to cut 
that will finish off the top of the hood or the engine block. And that would be this piece right here. And that's just a little piece of hood trim. Now it's 1 16th of an inch thick. It's got like two inches on one end and whatever on the other. It's got a taper, not important. But what I've done is I've cut that 1 16th of an inch from a two inch thick slab of poplar. Again, keeping my hands away from the blade. And do you remember the combination square trick I showed you? Did you move it? Because <laughs> if you didn't and you left it set where we had it when we did this before, you have it set for 1 16th of an inch and it's very easy for you to cut this piece to its proper thickness. All I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it all out, cut it rough on the scroll saw, and then I'm going to bring it up to its final dimensions um, with the sander. That's it. Nothing special. And we're going to glue that in place on the hood. And if you did that properly, you should have something that looks like this. It's coming along, isn't it? It's starting to look like a vehicle. Guys, that's all the time we have for this week, though, unfortunately. But we've made some really great progress on this. We're almost done the entire front of the truck, and now we can move on to all the other parts, like the cab and the sleeper, etc., etc. Um, it's moving along rather well, and this is an exciting time of the build where now we start to see that it's starting to look like something other than just a bunch of pieces and blocks of wood. So guys, I hope you're enjoying this build, and I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.